I am once again at Boston Logan International Airport, this time to fly on Icelandic low-cost carrier Play. Unfortunately, this airline does not offer kiosk check-in at Boston, so you will need to see an agent at the counter, which doesn't open until three hours before the departure time. Hopefully you are able to find security given the super subtle signage the airport provides. Player Airlines operates out of the E gates at Boston Logan, and depending on which gate you are actually going out of, you may need to backtrack once you are through security. Even though they offer online check-in, because they are a low-cost carrier, you do need to see an agent at the ticket counter or at the gate so they can verify you have the correct baggage with you, and that you have paid for everything if you need to. Fun fact, this is the same gate I departed out of on Allegiant's inaugural flight to Grand Rapids back in March of 2021. My bag got tagged with this and it said carry-on approved on the opposite side. Before I knew it, my aircraft for the flight arrived. It was an Airbus A320neo that carried the registration of TFPPE and was delivered directly to play new in November of 2022. All passengers flying on Play Airlines flight will join two Play does have a very interesting boarding process. The first boarding group was priority passengers and people that needed extra time down to the aircraft, and the second boarding group was everybody else. My seat for the flight up to Reykjavik is 2F a window seat on the right side in the carrier's extra legroom section. As previously mentioned, all carry-ons needed to have that approved tag on it, and if it didn't have it, they were not allowed in the overhead. I actually got pretty lucky for this red-eye flight, as I had nobody sitting in the aisle or the middle seat next to me. Oh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen from the public, it's your cat speaking. When I want to go to this flight to uh, Kjabloik, my name is Svetlana Sjæsson, with me here in the front is the first officer, Ander Ormason. Uh, we are ready now, expecting to expect a little bit ahead of schedule in a few minutes. And estimated flight time today is uh, quite short, due to good tailwinds, 4 hours and 30 minutes. And I'm expecting a mostly good flying conditions, although might be some light jumps now and then. If you noticed, the captain called the airport Keflavik, while the boarding passes and the gate monitor said Reykjavik. This is because the capital city of Iceland is Reykjavik and is the name that most tourists and outsiders are familiar with. But the international airport is technically located in the town of Keflavik, which is about an hour away from the capital city. This is also the reason why the airport code is KEF.
considering this is a relatively short red-eye flight, I decided to get right into the seat features and amenities on board. Number carrier is A320s, the extra legroom seats are the first two rows of their aircraft. Okay, I'm only 5 foot 4, so in place extra legroom seats, I had tons of room to spare. Plus it also didn't hurt that there was nobody sitting next to me so I could put my stuff under the other seats. The tray tables on play are generously sized, considering most tray tables on airlines like this are really, really small. Their seat backs offer phone and tablet holders, that way you can watch movies you downloaded before getting on board. The airline does offer internet, but it's not for streaming or looking up things on the internet. It's for ordering things on the airline's onboard bistro, looking at the interactive moving map, playing some games, or doing a survey. This pamphlet in the seat back pocket shows you how to connect. If you don't have a device or would rather not connect to the internet, they also have a paper version of their bistro in the seat back pocket. And there is also a small catalog in the back where you can order play themed items. Here you can see how much the seats lean back, which is about 3 inches. In between the seats in front of you, they offer a USB as well as a USB-C outlet. Given the shortness of the flight, about 30 minutes after takeoff is when I decided to try and get some sleep. After three hours of what could maybe possibly be considered sleep, I woke up as we were just about to start our descent into Iceland. The flight between Boston and Reykjavik is the shortest flight by distance between the two countries and not just for play airlines, so it didn't matter that there wasn't much in terms of amenities compared to full service airlines like British Airways or Delta, but they still offered quite a bit compared to low budget carriers like Spirit in the United States and EasyJet and Ryanair in Europe. I would definitely fly them again given the chance and the cost of this compared to other airlines coming up to Iceland, as this is a relatively expensive place to be and also to get to. From here I'm in Iceland for two nights and I interview the carrier's CEO, and then after that I continue on with them to Copenhagen. Videos for both will be up on my channel at some point soon. 
I also do not claim to be Icelandic by any means, so I do apologize for the pronunciation that I've gotten wrong in this video.